This is Dr. Alan Blum on July 7, 2015, uh, talking about uh, another story for the uh, Center for the Study of Tobacco and Society Oral History Collection. The uh, individual who I think uh, could be right at the top of the unsung heroes of the anti-smoking movement is a scientist in Pennsylvania named Gus Miller. And we connected in the late 1970s, early 1980s, when he had written a number of articles for the Indiana State Medical Association Journal and others on the delusion of the uh, idea that there could be a safer or less hazardous cigarette. Now, at that time, we had uh, the National Cancer Institute putting virtually all of its fairly small budget on smoking into the quest for the less hazardous cigarette. And this effort was led by a fellow named Gio Gori, but really this emanated from the congressional hearings in the late 1960s uh, and the testimony of Dr. Ernst Winder. And Winder had been a medical student at uh, St. Louis, or the, at, the, at Washington University in St. Louis in the early 1950s, and he was very interested in the uh, early reports of smoking and health, and he wanted to do original research on smoking and lung cancer and convinced a, uh, a mentor, Dr. Evarts Graham, a, a thoracic uh, physician, um, of some renown, and they went ahead and did it. Uh, Graham was very skeptical that smoking uh, caused lung cancer, but lo and behold, they did uh, uh, both epidemiologic work and also uh, they painted uh, ma mice with um, the tars uh, or the residue of cigarette smoke and were able to reproduce cancers. So their work mirrored that of uh, Hill and Dahl in England, which was the great epidemiologic work of the late 40s, early 50s that showed that uh, smoking was uh, causally related to lung cancer, whereas uh, Graham and Winder uh, in advanced that. Uh, Graham, incidentally, died of lung cancer from smoking. But um, Miller was amazed that um, this had not been challenged, and he tried his best to refute the notion that Winder espoused that because people wouldn't stop smoking, you'd had to uh, fund research to make a safer cigarette by removing the tar or making it less and reducing the nicotine. But uh, Miller caught on very early that, um, in fact, there were a lot of other components to cigarettes besides the tar and nicotine, namely the carbon monoxide and other poison gases. And he found literature that suggested that that meant that people who smoked had worse uh, carboxyhemoglobin uh, than non-smokers, and that uh, those who smoke filtered cigarettes and low-tar cigarettes had actually worse carboxyhemoglobin in their blood than that of those who smoked uh, conventional cigarettes. And he was one of the earliest to talk about the phenomenon of compensatory smoking, namely when you suck through a filter, you're increasing the acceleration uh, and inhalation of the poison gases. So I commissioned Gus to uh, write an article for the uh, second edition of the New York State Journal of Medicine devoted to the world cigarette pandemic, and it was entitled The Less Hazardous Cigarette, A Deadly Delusion. The most famous uh, advertising campaign at the time for smoking was, uh, for those who were thinking of stopping smoking and, and to whom the industry appealed, was Carlton is lowest. So you'd see billboards and magazine ads and very prominent magazines for Carlton cigarettes saying Carlton is lowest. And in the late 1970s, the Journal of the American Medical Association published a couple of articles by Gorey showing that uh, low-tar cigarettes were reducing or had the potential to reduce lung cancer. So they even made the claim that um, smoking uh, 20 Carltons was the equivalent of smoking one uh, Kent or whatever other brand. And I recall being at the Essex Hotel in New York and seeing uh, an ad on the cash register that I distracted the uh, the clerk to enough to take with me that was a reprint of the Washington Post article uh, that said, some cigarettes now tolerable, the doctor says. So American Tobacco Company was using the Washington Post article about the JAMA article to show that uh, even doctors would approve of low-tar cigarettes. Of course, nobody ever stopped and asked what tar was. Tar was just the composite of solid chemical poisons, over 4,000 of which are in cigarette smoke. 
And there is no safe level, as Gus pointed out in his articles in the New York State Journal of Medicine, and then another one called Do Filters Increase Smokers' Total Long- Longevity? This appeared in the journal CA, actually in the journal World Smoking and Health, as far back as spring 1978. And he would respond to articles in JAMA uh, by uh, questioning this. And uh, really, Miller was the guy that was going against the grain established by Gorey, uh, which was the quest for the holy grail of the less hazardous cigarette. Needless to mention, when uh, DeVita came into the National Cancer Institute and stopped the program to find a safer cigarette, Geo Gorey went to work for Brown and Williamson Tobacco Company. I think that uh, it's sad that Gus Miller uh, never got the recognition he deserved. He was crusading. He was considered uh, nutty by uh, a lot of people. Uh, And he just had a way of being a a, a pesky gnat in the ear of all of us who were trying to get the word out. I feel that uh, I was one of those that uh, listened to him. He was dead on. He could have saved millions of lives. And unfortunately, the conventional health charities, especially the American Cancer Society and others, although they did say there is no safe cigarette, did not get behind, nor do they even today get behind the notion that filtered cigarettes actually are more harmful. So we have 95% of of, uh, people who smoke smoking filtered brands um, in the belief that it's somehow safer. This is not true, never has been true, but this is the deadly delusion that Gus Miller was one of the very first to bring out.